Okay, so I've signed into Google Doc, and my comment should no longer <laughs> appear under anonymous. It's okay. Rebecca knows it's me. It's always me. <laughs> okay, so where were we? Uh, it always starts like the memory. His ship trapped by two others, being boarded, the crew and passengers separated. Now, I don't think this fits. This sounds well there. And I think between might be more appropriate. Trapped by, trapped between. I think I'm going to, whoops, I think I'm going to go for between instead of by. Somehow this appears out of place here, and I'm just wondering if it's even needed. It's kind of implied, right? I'm going to just make a note. And it's not quite, it's not grammatical. The ship, his ship trapped between two others. The crew and passengers separated. Yeah, I don't think it's needed. We'll just do without it. He rubbed his arm, mother clinging to him, weeping in fear. Now you see what Rebecca has done here. She's done this very nicely. She's telling out she's telling us what's happening now and relating it to what happened then. So this in italics is the flashback. And he's rubbing his arm now, he's feeling the memory of his mom clinging to him. So this is very nicely done. I like it. And you notice even though <clears throat> Even though it's not, it's flashback, she hasn't had to use the past perfect tense. She's using present continuous tense, clinging, weeping. These are um, very immediate tenses. So that's very nice, giving us that sense of immediacy, even though it's a flashback. Why had he allowed her to come along? But she'd been so proud of him, so that's why. Then the pirate appeared. Again, this is flashback. Again, in italics. Simple past tense. Emil flapped his open robe in the summer night, remembering that first glance stirred heat in his nethers. <laughs> okay, before I go further, I would like to say that this sub, uh, the submission is for the summer anthology coming up next year. And we, are, we decided to allow some heat because it's summer. And we're even calling it Summer Simmer. Okay, so Emil flapped his open robe in the summer night, remembering that first glance. Something's missing here. Stood. And I wonder why, whether heat might work better up here than down here. How about doing it this way? Emil flapped his open robe in the heat of the summer night. Remembering that first glance that had stirred. <laughs> I don't think we need heat here. To use loins. <laughs> it would work. Um, flapped his open robe in the heat of the summer night. I think that sounds nice. Um, all these comments are just suggestions. It's really up to Rebecca to decide. Um, but I kind of prefer the heat to be up here than down here. And that glance that had stirred his nethers. The pirates wanted him. Lord Magus Emile Le Mans. Hmm. Now I'd be very careful about using want here. The pirates had been after him. Because want can mean... <laughs> well, I'm hoping that not all the pirates wanted him. I'm hoping just one pirate wanted him. Um, so, it's a bit of a double meaning here, which we don't quite need in this instance. The pirates were after him. He was a target, right? So 
I'm not sure I want this word here. We're after him. Mother screaming as the pirate captain bore down on them. Again, this is in, in italics because it's the flashback. I really like the immediacy of this. No past perfect tense at all. Even though six months had passed, Emil's mouth still went dry at the memory. That extravagant hat and coat, his shirt open past the collar. So now we know this is not Emil, this is the parrot. It's in italics. This is all. This is all. Flashback. So this is the description of the pirate. A glimpse of dark chest and collarbone, the low stomach, trousers and stormy blue eyes. Sweet mother of God. <laughs> oh, mother goddess, since it's fantasy. He'd never seen an exile. Purple hair braided and adorned with golden beads. The captain took his chin. So this is a long stretch of flashback. You the magus? You are the Magus? Yes. That's the stress. You are the Magus. And because the rest is in italics, this has to be not italic to preserve the stress. And Mother, terrified but determined to defend her son, trying to intervene before Mill swept her behind him. Stay back, Ma. I'm thinking this is not necessary. He's a grown man. I think we lose nothing by losing this. And in fact, we gain a shorter sentence. And mother terrified but trying to intervene before Mill swept her behind him. Stay back, mama. He paced the balcony. So this is back in um, the present, what's happening right now. He paced the balcony, wishing he could just dunk himself in the bay below to quench the fires. That thrice damned captain had grinned and patted his cheek. Mother? Perfect. I was afraid she was your wife, and I'd never seduce a married man. <laughs> okay, that's a great line. Okay, I don't see much problems here. Let me check again. That extravagant hat and coat. The shirt open past the collar. Yeah, probably don't even need this. A glimpse of Duchess Elgon. No stone. No stone. Yeah. These little words don't seem like much, but when we lose them, um, we get better flow. Ex that extravagant hat and coat showed open past the collar. A glimpse of dark chest and collarbone, low stone trousers and stormy blue eyes. You see how that flows better without this little word and, and this little word? Non-essential words. Okay, we don't need them. You are the Magus? Yes, I don't think that's necessary at all. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to delete. I hope Rebecca agrees with me. But, you know, these are all suggestions. You can always um, restore. You can always say no to, to my suggestions. Um, you know, the author always have the final say. Yeah, I really like the way um, Rebecca has done the flashbacks in italics. You know, it's it's nice to have shorter sentences. Um, no past perfect tense to make things clunky. The immediacy of using um, you know, these verbs in present continuous. It's so easy to read. 
the way she's formatted everything. Do you see that? Perfect. Okay. <laughs> 